I recently had the chance to see in concert the two-time Grammy award-winning Snarky Puppy for the second time. If you've not heard of Snarky Puppy, I highly suggest looking them up on YouTube. If you enjoy real music exploration that, that defies clear categorization, you'll like Snarky Puppy. Now, I'm not about to spend any time actually talking about their music, but I could because it's just pretty amazing. What I do want to spend a little time on is my observation about some things I saw and how they relate to one another during the show that really caught my attention. Bands who go on tour end up playing the same songs over and over again. Imagine what it's like to be a creative person who writes music and dives into all manner of creative exploration only to go on the road and have to repeat the same things night after night. Couple that with traveling constantly and you have a recipe for a process that can be less than enjoyable for a lot of musicians. But what I saw on the stage at their concert was pure joy. I saw a group of guys that were enjoying what they do. But I believe I saw something else that says more about who they are as people than it does about their musical abilities. As the show progressed, I noticed something happening that you don't always see with other bands. I noticed that each musician seemed to really appreciate the other musicians they shared the stage with. And more than just appreciate, what I saw that really caught my attention was how they seemed to actually admire each other's playing. When someone was blazing through an amazing solo, other members in the band went from playing along to encouraging and celebrating. I saw musicians on stage who were, for a few moments anyway, just as much a fan of what was going on as those of us in the audience. Through their transition from player to player slash fan, they did two things. They served as encourager to the guys around them and they built a bridge between the audience and the stage. It's one thing to have fans at a distance encouraging your work, but to have other guys you are sharing the stage with root you on has to have an enormous impact on their spirit. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other one up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can anyone keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. The greatest of all accomplishments occur when the ego of the individual is set aside for the greater success of the team. When we clamor for individual success and the associated accolades that come along with it, we may succeed as a solo artist, but the greater accomplishments of the team are sacrificed in the process. Have you ever found yourself in an environment where those around around you are more occupied with making themselves look good than with lifting those around them up. Have you ever worked with someone who will do everything in their power to keep you from succeeding while they climb the ladder of achievement? Competition is pretty well a normal concept in our culture, but what would it look like if we worked just as hard to elevate those around us as we do at elevating ourselves? What would change if we enabled people to stand out? How would the dynamics of our work relationships change if we were as focused or even more focused on making the people around us see the value of a peer than ourselves? I know, I know, it flies in the face of culture and how we operate, but there is always the possibility that we all come out with a better result in the end. It's something to pray about, don't you think? Exploring the elements of faith can be a lifelong pursuit. Knowing what questions to ask can be the hard part. If you like what you saw here in this video, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube or like and follow on my Facebook page. My goal is to have a new video uploaded every week. More importantly, I'd love to hear from you. Share your thoughts with me about what the video means to you, or if you have a faith question or video suggestion, send me a message about it. I'm not going to tell you that I have all the answers, but I seriously enjoy the exploration process, and especially with others. In addition to YouTube and Facebook, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram, or my written blog on Tumblr by searching at Rev Chris Hall. Please feel free to share this video if you think someone else could benefit from it, and thanks for watching.